Hello again. Welcome back to Factoring Linear Expressions. I've got my Eagle Santa hat on. Now I have to say that I am a Chicago Bears fan, but my husband is an Eagles fan, which is why we have this hat. And since they have the best record in football right now, I figure I can wear this in support of the Eagles since the Bears are not having a very great season. So watch this quick video on factoring and then we're going to do some practice problems um, looking at GCF and factored form of linear expressions. To factor a linear expression, start by finding the greatest common factor or GCF of its terms. Write the prime factorization of each term. Then, circle the common factors. Multiply the common factors to find the GCF. Next, write each term as a product of the GCF and its remaining factors. Then, apply the distributive property. The factored form of the expression 12a plus 6b is 6 times the sum of 2a plus b. And I guess I should say that we are on page 262. So all of this information that you just saw, you can see again on page 262. So this is one way you can factor, and it's kind of the distributive property in reverse, because you're used to starting with this and ending with this, but now we're going backwards and taking this expression and pulling out that common factor. Um, and that's our very first part. You're going to be doing factoring a lot in um, algebra when you guys take algebra. So learning it now, again, will just help make it a lot easier when you get to that course. Now, um, I'll show you the way they do it here, and then I'll show you another way you can do this. So first, the first step, though, no matter what you do, is to find the GCF. So there are two terms, 3x and 9. And what would be the greatest common factor of 3x and 9? They don't have variables, so it's only the numbers. So just looking at 3 and 9, the common factor of 3 and 9 is 3. So that's our GCF. So then I can write this as 3 times parentheses x plus 3 times in parentheses 3. So we're just taking out that GCF and separating it into factors here. And then if you look, there's a 3 in common to both of these, so we can actually pull that out. It's like the distributive property in reverse. So this would be 3 times x plus 3. Okay, I was almost going to sneeze. This one you can write in the margins on page 262. I'm going to show you another way you can do this. Um, one thing you can do is find the GCF, and in this case, between 4 and 28, since they don't have x's, the GCF is just 4. So what you can do also, really essentially what we're doing, is we're going to divide each of these by 4. So the 4 will come outside parentheses, and if I divide this by 4, then we're left with x. And if I divide this by 4, then we're left with 7. So here's another way you can do that if you don't want to rewrite it um, like in the last example. Figure out what the GCF is. That's the number that is outside parentheses. And then to figure out what's left inside, you would just divide each of these by that greatest common factor. Let me give you another example. Um, I'll just do it right here. Let's see, erase all this though, so we have some space. Um, let me see. Just so I can see the kinds we're going to be looking at. Okay, so if I have, um, oops, 36xy plus, um, 12x. Okay, so we have two terms here. Now, what is the greatest common factor? Well, let's look first at 36 and 12. 
what would be the common factor between 36 and 12? And if you know, you don't have to do the prime factorization. And this one you should know that 12 is a factor of both of these. And so that's going to be our largest factor. And then if you look, they also both have an x. So x is also part of our common factor. So that common factor, that GCF, comes outside of parentheses. And now if I divide this by 12x, then 36 divided by 12 is 3. x divided by x is 1. That cancels out. And so we're left with 3y. And over here, 12x over 12x, anything divided by itself, is just 1. So the factored form of this is 12x times 3y plus 1. And I know this is a little bit complicated, so we're going to start with this today on the notes. Try the check problem on the bottom of page 262, so see if you can do one of them. And then we're going to look at another example, but we're going to spend plenty of time in class going over this and making sure you guys really understand this. So let's look at the next example. This is on page 263. Now if you look, 12x plus 7y, if I were to take the prime factorization of each of those, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3 times x, 7y is 7 times y, and there are no common factors here. So if there are no common factors, um, we say that it cannot be factored, okay? So you, you wouldn't be able to do anything or simplify this in any way. You would just say it cannot be factored, okay? Um, so if there is no GCF, then you just leave the expression as is. And then you guys can try the check problem on page 263, and that's all we've got. So we are going to do a lot of factoring together, um, but try those check problems. Maybe try a few of the problems on page 265 for some practice. Um, and then uh, maybe the odd numbers, because then you could check the answers in the back of the book. That would be a good place to go. But make sure you have your parent sign, page 263. There's a big old box on page 263. You can have them signed somewhere in that box, and I'll talk to you guys later.